Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Pierre and this is Simple Home Brew. Today I'm going to transfer my concoction. Uh, this is my all grain beer that I made live. I did a live stream. I'll put a link here if you want to have a look. I'm going to put some bits of that live stream in this so you, you'll see what I did. Uh, basically I'm going to grab the finished fermented beer that I made and I just made it out of a recipe I made up. I was going to do a dry hop. I'm going to transfer it into Keg Kings, 20 litre kegs that they designed. These are from, uh, well they actually had a what was it? A Fermenter King Fermenter that they made and it's just like this but clear. They obviously decided that these would be great as kegs. So I believe that too. They're a 20 litre keg. They're going to fit in my kegerator and hopefully become my go-to beers. They're made of PET uh, and it's also the plastic kind of plastic that will soak up oxygen within the plastic so it'll help with the oxygenation of your beers. And I think I'm looking forward to using it. Alright guys, here we go. So what I'm doing, you recording? So what I'm doing is I'm just going to quickly do a uh, closed gravity transfer. I've got a video on that here. Do you want to see it? I'm going to use my hoses that I've cleaned. I've been using these a few times now. So my, you probably can't see anything I'm doing at the moment. So I'll pop that up here so you can see. So my keg has been cleaned and it's sanitized, ready to go. I just need to pump some sanitizer through these tubes and then fill these up with uh, CO2 so we don't get oxygenation through all my beers. That's under about eight pounds of pressure or so. No, 10 pounds of pressure. This has no pressure in it at the moment. So I would like to quickly give these tubes a good clean out. Uh, that should be the serving side there. Yep, I hope. And what I'll do is I'll pump she could join us for these and join them together. That would be a great idea. I wonder if you can get them. Anyway, we'll do one at a time. I've just got to get this cleaned out. Uh, they are clean. I did clean them last time I used them. I just didn't uh, sanitize them. All I need to do is pop a little bit of gas in the fermenter. Put that over here. Just a little bit. Don't need much. Uh, maybe two pounds just to get that gas moving. I get the fluid moving. There we go, so it's moving. All I'm doing is just transferring some sanitizer, which is full of sanitizer at the moment, through my pipes, so I can clean out the pipes, and I'll do them, and then I'll get to uh, changing them. In the meantime, while I'm transferring this, I would like to show you some of what I did on the day I did this beer, cheers. So what I'm doing is basically a all grain, I've got um, some pale malt, or pale ale malt, or pale malt, I'm doing what it, what I've made up really is a concoction of just malts and grains that I have sitting around. Okay, I'll ground down my grains using about one mil gap, a bit bit under one mil gap. Um, I'm just going to put this away so it's out of the way. I'm going to bring up the water. The water's heated up to 65 degrees Celsius. So we'll bring that up, uh, fade in. There we go. That's our little bloke here. This is all our water. I haven't put the salts in yet, which I will do now. I will measure my salts out. I, like I said, I ground down my grains. I'll show you the grains. All ground down, ready to go. I've mashed it in. I've got the mash ready. I've got, I'm gonna let it settle for about 10 minutes. So it's been nearly three minutes now since I put it in. All right, what's going in is 20 grams of Columbus. Columbus, this has been, we, I used to shop at a company called Firkin Sellers in Morwell. They've been closed for, oh, I reckon, six months now. But this has been in my freezer for a while. And funny enough, that freezer died the other day and I had to move it all into another freezer. So that's something I need to get is another chest freezer. That'll be a long-term one, that one. Another, another bit of saving to do to get it. You know, that's just how it is. Oh, it smells so good. Okay, 20 grams. You, you guys can't see, but I'll show you in a sec. So 20 grams of Columbus. I'm using Columbus because it has a high bitter rating. It, it brings a bitter bitterness up, uh, apparently. So I'm gonna try that. That's it. Start a boil. That's ready to go. Oh look, it's starting to clear out a little now. Look. So we've got six minutes left. My sparge water is ready. So all I have to do is just bide my time and wait. Patience is a virtue. Uh, what a pain in the ass I think saying that is. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> well, it is, but yeah. 
I'm also using, <laughs> I don't know what to say to you guys, uh, Nottingham Ale Yeast. I'm going to add that in after I've done all this. A bloody flicker in again. Um, and these are the Amarillo hops. I've got all this at the same time. It's all been in the freezer all that time. And that one is lower in alpha acids. Uh, the Columbus is higher. It's about 14. Just double that, which will give me more bitterness. And I'm going to put this one in at 80 degrees, uh, what do they call that, hop stand. And leave it in there for 10 minutes or 15 minutes. I think that's what we do. And then I'm going to add the second one at about five days. That way I get a nice, beautiful aroma and flavor through the beer. And I'm hoping that will equate to a really nice beer. I will let you know. <laughs> I promise you. So it won't be too long. This will beep and let us know what's going on. And then I can start doing the next step. What I've done is on my grandfather, I've got the phone hooked up to my grandfather. And just watching it work now i've had this for grandfather for three and a half years or so uh been a great unit just a lot of things i had to iron out um if you got any of you guys own a grandfather you probably know about the little issues they had for a very expensive machine it really is strange that they didn't iron out those little problems like the connection to the tap to the um to the hose this bloke the one they had on there was terrible it just leaked it was horrible so i put a quick connect on there quick connect system actually learned that from david heath's website um and changed the uh, top and bottom tray or plates to make it more streamlined so i didn't have to sit there mucking around trying to get it on for 15 20 minutes which is true i took that long to get the bottom and top plates on bottom plate mainly and then halfway through a brew the rubber seal would just pop off it was just disgusting how they worked. Uh, I spent another 80 bucks on the new top and bottom plate to replace that that grandfather had created for it. And I'm glad they did it because they should have, I mean, really, they should have done that ages ago. Mash dip. Prepare for a sponge. Okay. So now, turn the pump off. We'll drain that out and get the lid off. Ooh, here we go. Here's the exciting part. <laughs> You guys can't see my face when I do that. Hello! <laughs> yes, I'm a 50-year-old kid. Alrighty. That's off. Put that down there. Grab the handle. So it's cleared out a fair bit, but not as much as I would like would have liked to have. But the colouring is looking pretty good. We'll bring that up. Hopefully the camera will still see what's going on. I'm probably going to have to open that window soon. So I'll let that drain through a bit. I'll pop this off. I'll just see what it looks like underneath. You, know? you guys are probably interested too. I'm not sure. Let's have a see. Let's look, look see. That looks alright. This isn't actually on the on the on the. It must have really compacted down. I should have probably gone in there and stirred it a little. Oh well. Got a bit of sweetness to it, which is great. That's what we want. Okay. Now you probably can't see me do it. I've got the sparge water. Oh, I probably can actually, looking in the video there. You can see the sparge water. So this is starting to drain down. It still hasn't gone down to the bed yet. So the bed must have compacted a fair bit. Right, we've got a problem with the uh, with the video here. So I'm going to fix up the position of that this video here for the, um, for the grains. Really just fix that up because you guys can't see what I'm doing. So, all right. So I cleaned this just then with the... With the what do you call it the keg cleaner thing i got from kegland it's not awesome uh if you're going to buy one see if you can find something a bit more a higher quality i'm um, pretty sure keg king do one now and i think it's a bit better um this one is flimsy it falls apart as soon as you put it away and it takes about you know it's it's, it's a pain in a butt to put together all the time just so you know about it it's getting there we're getting there. The boiler says the temperature is up to 72 degrees. It's going to boil up to 98 according to the the um the gauge. <clears throat> so like I said, the grandfathers they boil while you're sparging. They turn the boiler up. So it saves you a bit of time. It never used to do that, and I think they redefined it, made it a bit better. Okay, that's all my water. So I just got to wait for that to drain through. This might take 10-15 minutes to really drain out properly. While I'm waiting, I'm going to clean my fermenter out. I still have a couple of components to clean over there anyway. Uh, let that finish its sparge. That's clean and ready to, to add fluid to. I'll tip the, uh, the rest of the sanitizer out and we'll put our fluid in. All right. 
our grains are drained what I normally do is I will place the grain basket in my bucket in this and that will drain off a bit more over about half an hour and I'll actually tip that in well that's saying it's boiled um, I will get my hops in this is 20 grams of uh, Columbus that's for bittering that's in couldn't put in my spider of course which is a pity but it'll bitter it up nicely yeah 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 so there's the hops that's all ready to go it's boiling the temperature boil has reached press start we will now press start now it's starting right we've got a rolling ball i've got to keep my eye on it it's gonna foam up we know that <laughs> also i got something to show you um my daughter bought me some hops real hops to plant in my garden east kent goldings they are uh floral fruity and herbal 4.5 alpha apples alpha acids her and i she and i are going to plant that i don't know how i'm going to do it yet i need to make a trestle or something for it and plant it i've never grown hops before my plan was to grow hops eventually but it wasn't intending on doing it early but this is a good good time to start now okay so i've got a fair bit of fluid in there still so that's going in and i'll cool it down for a sec and then we'll bring it back up again in a sec won't take long Five minutes to go, we need to start preparing our... Oh my god, I forgot. Oh jeez, here I'm yakking. I didn't put my Warflock tablet in. Oh well, we'll just boil it a little bit longer. Holy jeez. Oh, that's a tough tablet. That's a bugger. You're supposed to put this in 15 minutes before. All right, we've got four minutes left. It is going to sit for a little bit, so I'll let that Warflock tablet get through. Damn it! Every time I forget the bloody Warflock tablet. I want it to be a clear beer. Holy jeez. Alright, we'll be right. Now, there is another thing I have to do. Uh, bugger. That's, that's, that's what a painful thing about it being here. I need to sanitise my counterflow chiller. I need to do that now. I'm just going to let that boil a little longer. But I need to run that for 15 minutes to sanitise. I will do a whirlpool in a minute. Now hop stands uh, probably 10 minutes. It's at 80 degrees Celsius. I'll put 50 grams of Amarillo in. It's 80 degrees. Yep, still. That's a lot, I know. But it's I like a lot of flavour in beer. I'll stir that. Look at the cloudiness now. Do my whirlpool, whirlpool. Nearly there. It's down to 74 degrees Celsius. It is circulating the wort through. I will test now and see what temperature that's at. Out coming out of the uh, coming out of the counter flow. We'll use our thermometer. I'll pop that somewhere. Turn it on. Turn it on, not. Hello? Oh, here we go. Bit of time. I need to sanitize the end of this because now it's going to be cold and it's susceptible to bacteria. Alright, so this is 18 degrees in the shed now. Bring this up. Oh, it's right in the wrong spot, isn't it? The thing's cool. We'll just pop that in there. Where are we at? Oh, look, it's a 16 degrees Celsius. I am going to use that. Stop that pump. We will pump it in. I will shake it up. Shake it up. Alrighty, that's transferring. Um, that's good. Okay, I will shake that up when I'm done. I will when I put the yeast in. I'll shake it all up. Right, so she's pumping, she's filling, and it's going pretty good. 
temperature is staying pretty cold it is like i said it's cold here uh the temperature is on the, the water temperature would be around about 10 degrees celsius at the moment our uh, tap water what we got gravity is very low i betcha oh no get the beer bubbles out of it we are at well the efficiency is not too bad what do we got well it was meant to be 10 71 but i did reduce a few of them actually no it changed because i changed the grains it was 1060 it was going to be 1062 or something i forgot about that um we're at yeah 1058 i'm on that 1058 is the uh going rate so it gravity is at 1058 we'll live with that um just advice to you guys if you do this don't tip it back in there could be bacteria still in there i wouldn't do it Okay, it said 20.6 degrees Celsius. How's that? So the tilt is acclimatizing to the temperature. We'll leave it at that. I will pop my yeast in, because that's ready to go. You can already see it settling. Again, I use sanitizer on everything, because I am trying to be clean. Something I don't know if you guys know about, I learned recently um, with yeast. The yeast is... When I manufacture, I'll put it into a packet and dry it. Oh, I dropped the packet in. I dropped the packet in. Why would you drop the packet in? Okay, I sanitized it. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> what are you, unbelievable. Um, where's the lid? It, what, what I was saying is that the yeast is... Uh, sorry, when I package the yeast up, they package it with yeast nutrient. No, I didn't know that. Just recently I learned that just... Uh, where was I? I was online somewhere talking to somebody about it. But anyway, I see you don't have to worry about nutrient with packet or dry yeast because they pack it with yeast nutrient already. So it's not a big deal. This is the other benefit of these things. They've got handles on the lids. So I'll shake that up again, because, you know, oxygenate, get the um, yeast through it as well. And that's our brew done. Baby laying off the coffee, baby going for a walk, baby feeling warm and fussy. not ready of course it needs time to age it needs time to settle it has a not, had a nice head on it but I I've been busy so I haven't actually come back to it but it, it held the head a fair bit it's still got a bit of carbonation in it and smell wise it smells brilliant it smells really good sometimes you get you do a recipe and you go what do I do I'll just get the grains I've got and just put them together and see what I can get out of it and you think What's it going to be like? I hope it's going to be good. What I'm doing is putting malt, a lot of malt together, and a, some specialty flavours, and just a little few, few little things to make it taste good. And which is what I did. I put amarillo, and I used I think Columbus was it? I remember uh, I I bit, bitted it with Columbus and some amarillo. And this is it. This is the cloudy version. It has to settle for a couple of weeks in my fridge to get it to age a little. But just straight from the fermenter beautiful fresh smell I've, I've had commercial beers here as you know in tastings and they've been as good as this easy wow it smells great it hasn't got major hoppy flavors of smells and I, I didn't do the dry hop I was going to do a 50 gram dry hop at about day five and I didn't do it I decided I'm going to leave this alone let's taste it shall we hmm hmm well that's interesting so they um Oh, it's got it's nice <laughs> I'm excited this is really good it's not majorly ready uh, give it a couple more weeks and it will be great um, not freezing cold not highly carbonated now it needs to be carbonated a bit it's got a bit of flavor it's sweet uh, not overly sweet just a little bit malty very malty uh, I can taste some of the things but it hasn't got any off flavors which is a bonus um, it smells like a commercial beer. Uh, I can smell the yeast in it still, so I've got to wait for that to settle. 
I have a um, a gravity checker checking the gravity. The Tilt Red 1012. Uh, but you, I'm sure there's alcohol in that, but it's so flavoursome. I can't taste the alcohol, so that's going to be a problem. <laughs> it's going to be way too easy to drink this one. So this has got carbonation in it. I've been shaking it up trying to get the carbonation out. Still got a fair bit going on. Uh, I'll just wait for a little bit. So the tilt said 10-12 for the gravity. Uh, it had a bit of chunkies on top of it, so I'm not sure that's correct. Uh, if I drop that in there, it seems around about right. But I'll pop a little spot up here to tell you what it was. Now I use grains I had left over and I have a recipe in Grainfather's website as well as Brewfather. And if you guys are interested in the flavour of this and trying it out and see what it's like, go ahead, have a go at it. It's not too bad. Very surprising how good it actually is, to, to be honest. Alright, that's the beer done. Uh, I am going to do a tasting on this in a couple of weeks' time, just to let you know what it actually came out like. And we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. So, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, thanks to the Patreons for supporting this channel. Without them, this could not be possible. I am actually making products or getting products now that are paid for by those guys as well I sold a trailer so it actually gave me a little bit of cash to buy extra parts I do have a video coming up oh, I've had a video on this one which is a Titan so if you're interested in the Titan check this one out I'll pop that there have a great one guys we'll see you in the next one cheers no 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 I can't sleep I can't sleep no more no.